I want to welcome you to another podcast of the Prodigal Son. I thank God, I praise God today for the ability and the means and the purpose in life to do this podcast. I thank God that He has opened my eyes to the love and the mercy, the grace, the goodness, the wisdom of Him and and pointing me to His Word and the truth in it. My prayers for you come out of Ephesians, the first chapter and the 15th verse. It says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And and may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I take these scriptures and I read them on this podcast every time I do a podcast. Every time I preach a message on this podcast, I read those. Those are Paul's prayers to the Ephesians, but I've adopted them for the, for the people of this world that, that, that their eyes of understanding would be opened to God's love, His mercy, His goodness, and His desire to bless you to bless each and every person that walks the face of this earth. Glory to God. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I praise you and I thank you, God, for your Word. Guide and direct me. Use me that I might be the light and the vessel that you would have me to be in this world. Lord, touch hearts and lives in a mighty way. There's people out here that need you in their life. They've been fooled into thinking that religion is you and that is not you. Lord, I pray that I would shed light on who you really are, and that is a loving Father that wants more than anything to see him, to see people coming to Him, see His children coming to Him, see the lost people of this world coming to Him so that He can do what He wants to do in their life, and that is to love them and cherish them and bless them beyond imagination. Lord, I thank You for this desire that You've given me in my heart to teach people just who you are, just who they can be in their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to your name this morning. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. I'm going to be taking my scriptures today from Romans, the 8th chapter and the 11th verse. I want to explain something to you today. There's a lot of people 
in this world that, that accuse God of making people sick, making people uh, suffer in this lifetime. But that's not God. Before I read Romans 8, I want to go to Roma, uh, to Acts 10, 38. This is very important. I want you to understand this, that God's not out to hurt you. He's out to help you. He's out to strengthen you. Romans, Acts 10, 38 says, And how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Healing all that were oppressed by the devil. People's sickness is from Satan himself. Satan himself. I want you to understand this. Now I'm going to read Acts 8, 11. Or I'm sorry, Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Now that's saying, if you're born again today. I'm telling you, if you're born again today, the Spirit of God dwells in you. It says, but if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Did you hear what I said? That He will, He will, He will, quicken your mortal bodies. I want to read this in the New Living. It says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give you life, give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. They did, now, did you hear that? that? God's Spirit brings life. God's Spirit brings life. And where it dwells, not death. Sickness and disease brings death. Sickness and and disease is from Satan himself. And he has somehow fooled us into thinking, fooled the religious world into thinking. He hadn't fooled me anymore, but he has fooled the religious world into thinking that, that, that it's God that's trying to teach you something. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in God's children. Do you understand me? I want you to see and understand what I'm telling you. The Spirit of God, if if the Spirit of God dwells in you, if you're born again today, the Spirit of God dwells in you, and sickness has no place. God's Spirit brings life. God's Spirit brings strength, hope, oh, strength to, to, to His people. Glory to God. Let's look at, at Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19, Satan and sickness have no place in your life. I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that. It says, behold, now this is Jesus talking. It says, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by will any means hurt you. Do you hear me? Now, now this is this is something that I want you to see and understand. Jesus was talking to the seventy that he sent out. I want you to understand this, but you can take this as your own. It says, "Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and all the power of the enemy, and nothing by will by any means shall hurt you." God's Spirit dwells in you. God's Spirit dwells in me. God's Spirit brings life. And Jesus said, nothing by by any means will hurt you. You don't have to be sick another day. You don't have to be, have disease dwelling in your body another day. Isaiah 53, 5 said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. 
2 Peter or 1 Peter 2.24. I want to read uh, 1 Peter 2.24. I want to go over here and read it and get it in my eyes. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Your healing is just waiting on you. Your healing is just waiting on you. I want to explain something to you about healing today. You have all it takes. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. And and all you have to do is receive that healing by faith. To receive anything that God has told you you can have in His Word by faith. Do you see what I'm saying? I want you to know and understand something. Today, the Spirit of God dwells in you. And and Jesus Christ came, Isaiah 53, 5, and 1 Peter 2, 24 explains, describes what Jesus Christ done for you at Calvary's cross. Not only did he make the sacrifice for salvation, but he made the sacrifice for healing. He bore the stripes that you are healed with. He done that 2,000 years ago. I want to to explain something to you about taking something by faith. You know, the electric company is constantly uh, producing power. Where I live, there's there's uh, reactors around here. There's uh, coal fire plants around here that produce electricity, and there is wires running into my home that brings electricity to my home. But you know, I can go over here to the switch box and turn everything off, and there won't be nothing turned on in my house, or. And I can call the, 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 the electric company and say, look, my electricity is not working. They can check it and say, no, there's power to your house. You need to turn the switch on. You need to receive the power that is right there at the, at the, uh, at the breaker box in your house. And if I go over there and turn that switch on, it electrifies everything in my house that's supposed to be electrified. And I can go and turn the light on in a, in a room, and it comes on. Faith is that switch. Faith is that switch that, that, that releases the power that God has instilled in us by the Holy Spirit for our healing. We were healed 2,000 years ago. We were healed when Jesus Christ bore the stripes for our healing. And all we have to do is receive that healing. And faith is that switch that, that, that receives it, that receives it, that allows it to come into your heart and your life and into your body and, and heal you from the top of your heads to the bottom of your feet. The uh, Acts ten thirty said ten thirty eight says that Jesus went around about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. People, I want you to see this. I want you to understand this. Satan and sickness have no place in your life. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim: Satan and sickness have no place in your life. Do you hear me? In the name of Jesus, I rebuke all sickness and disease out of your body. Now, if you'll receive that, and you'll believe that and receive that, and let the switch of faith be turned on, receive your healing today. In Jesus' name, I proclaim healing today today over you and your circumstances. Whatever sickness may be going on in your life, I proclaim healing today. If the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, healing or or disease and sickness has no place. Healing has come to you today.
Glory to God. I read that this morning and I thought, wow, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God dwells in me. That has no place. My body has no place for sickness and disease. It's from Satan himself. The book said it. The Bible says it. Acts 10, 38 says that Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Healing all that were oppressed by the devil. I promise you today one thing. That God's not a liar. And what he said, he will do. Glory to God. There is healing for you today. You may say that, you know, I don't know. I I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, I'm not born again. Well, that's the easiest thing in the world to do. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Be born again. Be born again today. See what I'm talking about come into your life. Not only can God save you today, not only will he save you today, but you can receive healing just like you receive salvation by faith. Receive healing today. Receive that that switch of faith turned on in your life. Turn that switch of faith on and believe in your heart. Believe in your heart. You know, Mark Mark 11, 23 said that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Speak to that disease. Tell it it ain't got no place in your life. Tell it that Jesus bore stripes on Calvary's cross to see you healed and you're going to receive it just like you did your salvation. Be born again today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life by faith and then take your healing by faith. Allow the Holy Spirit that, that, that will come into you during uh, or when you're born again and dwells in you and, uh, and allows that the, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you through God's Word and to assure you that you can count on what He said. Glory to God in the highest. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. Make Him Lord and Savior of your life. And then know that the Spirit that dwells in you brings life, not death. Don't let religion lie to you another day and tell you God God is trying to punish you for something. God's trying to teach you something. No, Satan's trying to oppress you with sickness and disease. Cast it off. In Jesus' name, through the blood of Jesus Christ. If you're not born again, be born again today. If you are born again, receive your healing today. And, 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 and if you're just now getting born again, just go ahead and receive the healing that comes along with salvation. Glory to God. It thrills me to know that there is healing along with salvation Every, I mean, it it, it just, there's places all through the Bible. I'm going to read one more. I'm going to read one more. Matthew 8, 17. It says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. Now, this is quoting Isaiah 53, 4. It says, it might be fulfilled by the spoken Isaiah, the prophet saying himself, took our infirmities, and bear our sicknesses. If Jesus Christ bore our sicknesses, we don't have to bear them. He bore our sins. We believe that. We receive our salvation. Now, what's what's it going to take for you to believe that he bore your sicknesses and carried your diseases? You see what I'm saying? Accept him as your healer today. Receive your healing. Turn on that switch of faith and receive what God has for you. Healing a whole body, strengthened through Him, and and the power 
that he has put in us through the person of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest. Be born again today. Receive your healing today and watch God change your life forever. Boy, I thank God that I can believe what God's word says. I thank God that he's not a liar. Glory to God. If you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what God is doing in your life. We want to hear what you need him to do in your life. If you've been born again through this podcast, get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. If you've been healed, listen to this podcast. If you've turned the switch of faith on and received your healing today, get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. We want to know what God is doing in your life. It thrills me to hear from people that that have come down, got down to business and said, look, I'm going to believe God's word. I don't care what I see. I'm going to believe God's word. And I'm not going to go by my, my feelings, but I'm going to believe on him and the truth in his word. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. We want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to take just a minute to thank all the partners of this ministry. I thank you that you sow your your resources into this ministry to see God's word go out all over this world, seeing people born into the family of God, strengthened through him, through him, through the guidance and the understanding of the truth in his word. We covet your prayers that we would always do what God would have us to do and be guided and directed in the direction that he would have us to go. Partners, you got a part in seeing all these people born into the family of God when you sow into this ministry. Glory to God, and I thank you for that. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about people getting to hear what you are hearing today, the truth in God's Word, the truth in what God's Word says, not what man says. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.